Bang. Whoosh. Crackle. Pop. Fizz. These were the noises that filled the skies last weekend. As we remembered, remembered the 5th of November. Gunpowder, treason and plot. However, this weekend we remember, not through noise, but through silence. We remember not through bright colours, but through fields of red poppies. As I heard the fireworks last weekend, I wondered what memories those bursts of sound must bring back to war veterans and refugees whose history has been shaped by the sound of terror. Today, we remember men, women, boys and girls whose lives who have been and are being torn apart by the sounds of conflict. With gratitude, we remember their sacrifice and we give thanks for silence upon our shores whilst recognising the noise of war which still bombards so many places. We remember today the cost of war. But to remember is not simply to look back, but to let the past shape our future. Looking back on the horrors of war should inspire us to live a life which expresses the beauty of peace. But peace is so much more than guns falling silent, treaties being signed and stillness in the air. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word shalom translates as peace. But this word is more than silence. This word shalom actually means completeness or wholeness. For a moment, consider what images come to your mind when you think of conflict. Perhaps it is the bloody atrocities of the World War I battlefields or bombs ripping through the Middle East. Perhaps it is the violent crime afflicting our cities or the gang warfare on our streets. Perhaps it is aggressive arguments between husbands and wives or bullying amongst school children. All of this conflict comes from brokenness. Conflict comes when relationships are shattered into pieces. But peace or shalom comes when broken, fractured relationships are restored and made whole. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and earth, the skies and the seas, the animals and all humanity, all of creation was whole and complete. But when sin entered the world, relationships fractured and conflict erupted. Our relationships with ourselves were harmed as we lost sight of who we were created to be. Our relationships with one another were fractured as we let diversity create division. Our relationship with our earth was spoilt as we exploited its resources. Our relationship with God was damaged as we sought to hide from him. Our wholeness fragmented, and instead of being at peace, we found ourselves in pieces. But in the most incredible way, humanity was given an opportunity to be restored, to be reconciled, and to be whole again. God gave the world the hope of shalom through the gift of his son. In just a couple of weeks, we will begin our Advent journey as we move towards the manger to wonder at the gift of Christ. As we read in Isaiah 9 verse 6, the child born to us is the Prince of Peace, that is the Prince of Shalom. Jesus is the one who can restore all that is broken. He came to earth to restore humanity's relationship with God and to show us how to have shalom with ourselves, with one another and with our planet. 
Colossians 2 verses 9 to 10 says this. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Through the birth of a baby and the death and resurrection of an innocent man, we can all be reconciled to our creator God. We can all know completeness and wholeness. We can all know shalom. But to have shalom is not just something within us, but something outside of us too. In one Peanuts cartoon, Lucy says to Charlie Brown, I hate everything. I hate everybody. I hate the whole wide world. Charlie says, but I thought you had inner peace. Lucy replies, I do have inner peace but I still have outer obnoxiousness. Have you ever met anyone like that? Perhaps it's you and I sometimes. But to have the pure peace we read of in the Bible consumes our whole being. That's the whole point of it. To have shalom is to seek to restore broken relationships. For the world to have shalom is not just to stop fighting between nations, but to begin working together for each other's benefit. For our communities to know shalom is not just to hide away in our houses and ignore each other, but to seek the best for our community by enjoying life together. For our personal relationships to exhibit shalom is not just to tolerate one another, but to embrace one another. For ourselves to live in shalom is not just to stop beating ourselves up, but to honour the life we have been given. What relationships need reconciling in your life? How does conflict and brokenness impact your life? How can you experience more of God's shalom? God wants you to know fullness of life. He wants to take the broken pieces of your life and bring you peace. Will you ask him to do that today? Bradford Cathedral are currently hosting a display entitled There But Not There with silhouette metal figures commemorating the lives of those who served and died in World War I. These stark images remind us of the tragedy of individual lives lost, but their transparent nature causes us to reflect on what it means to be both present and absent. We would often define peace as the absence of war, But a wise person once said, peace consists not in the absence of trouble, but in the presence of God. In John 14, verse 27, Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus says these words, aware of the horrific violence, conflict and betrayal that is coming his way. He goes on later to tell the disciples that they too will have trouble. However, the peace that Jesus gives is not an escape route from suffering, but instead is an assurance that he is with you always and can make you whole. This Remembrance Sunday, we remember the horrors of war and the trauma of brokenness. We pray for peace and reconciliation for our world today. But we too must reflect on our own relationships and our own experiences of God's peace. Peace may seem so elusive, but Jesus gives us his peace which is greater than the world could ever offer. His gift of peace is beyond all our understanding. 
This peace is not just for days when stillness surrounds, but for days too when turmoil shouts so loudly. This peace is found in the presence of God when we are made whole again. Will you seek his peace today and abide with him? God bless you.